your next app is too big. I don't think you need me to tell you that. I'm sure you're already insecure about it. You've opened up your network tab. You've seen how much JS comes down. You Every time you build, you see really big numbers. Sometimes they're glowing red in your build tool. And you're like, wow, that's too big. How do I make it smaller? Well, we're going to talk all about that. Let's do it. So how do we get started? The first and most essential tool in figuring out why the hell everything is too big is the Next Bundle Analyzer. The Next Bundle Analyzer is a fantastic package that gives you a nice UI about the website that you've built. Let's give this a shot on Zapdos quick. And when I say quick, I mean this is going to take a bit. I am very sorry it does. So first, you npm install the package. Then you need to actually add it to your Next config, because the way the Bundle Analyzer works is during your actual build, it keeps track of all the things that are installed and then spits out a super fancy HTML like page to show you what's making each part or part so big. So let's open up VS Code, hop over to the next config, and yoink this guy. And we can wrap next config with bundle analyzer. Oops, forgot to paren there. And now, theoretically, we should be done. We'll yoink this environment variable. And now, as we build Zapdos, we get an HTML output of both the server and the client JS. So the server JS, this file, this is the stuff that gets sent up to your server. For some reason, this doesn't appear to have loaded. Weird. Uh, it doesn't matter too much. Generally, I recommend ignoring this file for the most part anyways. It might show you if you have some weird package that's blowing things up and downloading way too much. But generally speaking, that one's not going to be that important. The one that is, is this guy. This shows you each of the different chunks in your app and breaks them down into sections. So we can see here pretty clearly that one of our dependencies is weirdly large. Pusher. Pusher is parsed 68.3 kilobytes. Thankfully, the parse size isn't the one that matters a whole lot. It's the gzip size. That's what gets sent down to the user. Regardless, any route that has pusher being used is now 18 kilobytes larger than other routes. If our app had multiple routes that had meaningfully different bundles, we would see those in here. And we would see a very clear, here's the bundle for each of these things. I'm going to do something that might not be the most advisable, but I think it will be very good content. Mark is currently on a date, so I don't have to worry about my CTO getting too mad about this. We're going to run the same on the ping code base. So analyze equals true, npm run built. And now we're going to take a look at the absolutely massive bundles we have on the ping site. Creating an optimized production build, as you see, these builds take a little longer. This is a very large production app. And it looks like the server bundle is still broken here. Interesting. We'll look into that in the near future. But here we see a bunch of packages and the crazy things that are a lot more bundles, just generally speaking. Ably is the alternative to Pusher that we're using for our WebSocket stuff right now. We also have HLSJS, which is how we play videos on the homepage. The Agora SDK, which we're using for some of our WebRTC stuff, which is absolutely massive. It's, this SDK is rough. I Good luck, have fun if you're using it for things. But here, React seems pretty small, and this is hilariously massive. Like 1.04 megabytes parsed. Hilarious. This makes it very clear why things are and are not slow. But if we go here, we see all of these different sections and which pages are how big. The thing that sticks out here is that our underscore app is 211 kilobytes which is pretty big because that means that's like the baseline for every other page. So if we look into the underscore app JS, we can see here all of the things that are necessary just because of app. And in here we see the source pages has about 40 kilobytes of things that everything needs. We have our core node modules, which includes React Query, Popper, Next, TRPC, and a bunch of these other things. This is stuff that's mounted in our app TS. So in the app TSX folder or file, 
all of the things in here are called in some meaningful way. So all of them are included just because the app file was included. This gets combined with, uh, I want to let me zoom out properly, the core like React DOM bundle as well as the core like next bundle. And then that gets loaded on every page as a result. Then other things like the marketing site, for example, which is our homepage, has a few weird things within it that are unique to that. But for the most part, is a pretty simple bundle. So in this, the additional like JS being loaded on that page is only about twenty kilobytes. If we go to like the like the dashboard catch-all, that's going to be even smaller. But if we go to, I don't even know what that's a chunk for. Uh, any of these chunks for pages that are interesting? Not particularly. Most of these are not necessarily very interesting, page-wise. Also change that to the gzip size. Can I? I wish there was a way to pick a route and see all of the stuff that is like for that specific route. It's not that simple, sadly, because it's just kind of spitting out chunks. And then depending on which page you go to, different sets of these chunks are being loaded. But the thing that I really wish there was an easier way to do is see the relationship between the number here. So when I see that like underscore app is 211 kilobytes, how do I use that number and break it into parts yeah a lot of these things like the dashboard or any of these lot bigger uh here's a big one the pricing page we did a bunch of crazy stuff on the pricing page and we loaded uh like a stripe thing to do that as well so this ends up being significantly bigger than some of the others what's the number on the left again is it that's really easy it's size so this is the amount of stuff that's like unique to that route. So we can see here uh, on our dashboard, since this one has all of our blog posts on it, there is more JS content because there's more markup that's actually loaded on those pages. This makes it very easy to see the different routes and the different amount of JS necessary for each of them. And it's generally a really nice way to see how expensive any given one of these endpoints or requests is. Generally speaking though, if you have a weirdly large bundle, you can start from this view in the client HTML once you've set up next bundle analyzer, hunt for things that are suspiciously big, and then try to not load them until you need them. What does that mean, not load them till you need them? Well, with, with, or with the pusher example, if we didn't want to load pusher until we were, let's say, on the client and loading like page content, what we might do is in the bundle, rather than having the I have a dynamic import in here in line. Uh, where did I use it here? So in here I have the lazy questions view. This is wrapped dynamic just to make SSR false. All the JS still exists in the bundle. However, if I wanted to, I could take the questions view and all of the things it relies on, including pusher, break those out into a different file. And now this bundle will be separated. So if I go back to in here, the pusher bundle is separate, but I believe that this will still be loaded in there. And I would imagine that the first JS load uh, for the home page is, yeah, 149 kilobytes. So let's go get that down fast by breaking this into a question view.tsx. Go back in here. Copy all this. Paste all this, export, default, Add a bunch of this isn't necessary anymore. If I go back in here, I can delete a lot of things. We'll start with this guy. Keep deleting. God, I wish that the trackpad scrolling wasn't so chaotic in here. And this needs to be import slash components question view. I think it's dot dot slash components question view. Nice. Now, none of that is needed. And a bunch of this isn't either. And if I understand how dynamic works correctly, this should now be smart enough to significantly change what those bundles look like. 
So we'll build again. And look at that. It's now 121 kilobytes because we moved out the 20 or so kilobytes of the pusher bundle separately. So uh, yeah, this is the new version. And in the static page, uh, do I have the old one around? I don't because it uh, actually, yes, I do have the old one. Cool. So it's 132 kilobytes before in this module. And I think we got that down. Uh, this is app. So that's actually not going to be any different. Do we have the bundle for the, the root here somewhere? Yeah, pages index is now 17.37, or it was. And now, where is that page? 11.07. But it just, it looks entirely different, which is the most interesting part, in my opinion. Uh, which one is, okay, that's the server one that we don't want anymore. Yeah. Like, which packages are bigger and smaller has fundamentally changed between the old one and the new one because things can be broken up way more and you can have these smaller parts now specifically because you broke the files out and you have a dynamic load boundary between them. So things like that, where you're willing to say, hey, I don't need the question view to load until after the JS has come through. Hell, I'm okay with a, like a placeholder in the interim. You can use suspense with react.lazy. You can use like import breaks using dynamic like I did here, but solutions like that to take the big chunks of JS throw them somewhere else and then break them up via file boundaries and like lazy loaders allows for build tools such as the SWC and Webpack builders in Next.js, as well as things like Vite and uh, the Vite ecosystem when you're using React with it to automatically split your bundles and load the JS necessary based on where the user is and what content is loading. I think these are the pieces that will allow you to take a very big and heavy Next.js application, or honestly, even one built in Vite, and break that down into the smaller bundles necessary for your users when they're loading and using your application. There aren't too many tools to help you break up your bundles and find logical places to do such. That's kind of what our job is as developers who care about performance. So using things like the Next Webpack Bundle Analyzer and your own intuition working with the code base to find the routes that are too big, find the things that they don't need, and break those out to make the initial load smaller will make your websites feel faster and it will impact the performance that your users feel. I highly recommend taking the time to run the Webpack Analyzer against your Next.js application just to see what you could remove from your bundle, maybe break out. Maybe you have some package you don't even mean sneaking into client. Hell, we had a person at uh, or in the Discord earlier that had or discovered the entire Amazon AWS client was being imported onto the user side, which was like 600 kilobytes of JavaScript that the users did not need. Actually, I think it was megabytes of JavaScript the users didn't need. And by putting that behind a like type import barrier, they were able to prevent that entirely. So I hope this was helpful. Look for these shortcuts and or look for these gotchas. Take advantage of the bundle analyzer and try to figure out how you can make your application a little bit smaller. If you have success, please share in the comments what you've learned from here and how this is, or what you found in your own bundles. And if you found any other tricks as well, please share those too. Make sure you've joined the Discord if you haven't already, t3.gg slash Discord. And if you haven't joined the memberships on YouTube just yet, please do. For the next couple of weeks, YouTube's actually doubling the amount of money that I get whenever you or, or do a mon or whenever you join um, as a member. So instead of the five dollars you're com or contributing, getting cut by whatever the cut is, YouTube just hands me ten dollars whenever you join as a member right now. So please, if you don't mind, hit that membership button. I really appreciate it. You also get access to the sub only channels on the Discord if you do. Thank you again for taking the time to listen to this rant. I hope that we're able to make your next JS app a little bit smaller and a little bit faster with the tips that we showed today. Peace, y'all.